là Only two days on the job, the tenure of the new Gallaudet University president is over. The takeover of the Northeast Washington campus this week touched off a wave of resistance to Dr. Elizabeth Zinzer's appointment on Sunday. Phyllis Armstrong reports on the North Carolina educator's decision to step down to make room for the possible selection of the first deaf president of the 124-year-old institution. To send them a message that we all celebrate with them in this their day in the sun. The farewell of Dr. Elizabeth Zenzer now shines as a ray of hope for Gallaudet University students and faculty in contrast to the cloud of dissension that brought her resignation late last night. I think what we've seen here is a very special moment in time for the deaf community that has taken place and we could not possibly, any of us, have quite anticipated that this was that moment in time until we found ourselves a part of it. When we did, being human, we responded to it. In stepping down as president, after only two days in office, Zinzer said it was the national impact of the historic push for a deaf leader of Gallaudet that convinced her it was time to go. The North Carolina educator spent all day Thursday trying to break down the barriers of silence separating her from the students. But the chairman of the board of trustees now says the surge of resistance to a hearing president came as a surprise. I want to make clear, however, that views about the next president are most useful now, not later. We are particularly interested in hearing from all board members, university groups, and members of the hearing impaired community that have been most active since last Sunday. Still, the board secretary, who supports the students' demand for the majority of the trustees to be hearing impaired, says warnings about backlash were underestimated. I don't think that the other hearing members of the board really understood the intensity of the section of the president, hearing president. They didn't really realize that it would be that intense, and neither did we. Although Spillman says she is personally pained by the storm of resistance to Zenzer, she'll leave her future up to the board. The trustees will meet in a special session early next week to begin the search for a new president with no reprisals to be taken against the protesters. As for Zenzer, she is returning to the University of North Carolina at Greensboro to her former position as Vice President for Academic Affairs. However, she says she'll leave tomorrow with wonderful memories of an experience she compares to something Fred Allen, a 1940s radio personality, once said. We may only live once, but if we do it right, once may be enough. It's one of those kind of experiences for me. It is an experience the student Zenzer wanted to guide into the next century continue to see as a catalyst for change. Don Torrance has more in a live report from Gallaudet University. Well, the students have four demands, and they say that Zinzer's resignation represents only one half of a demand. They still want a deaf president, and they say the protests will continue until they win that point, too. Deaf president now! Deaf president now! The students have four demands, and they say Zinzer's withdrawal is only half a demand met. They still want a deaf president, and they say they'll keep the protests going until they win on that point, too. It's very important to our school because 
when we see Gallaudet having a deaf president, that means that Gallaudet is a good role model. But even that's not all they want. They want half the board of trustees to be made up of hearing impaired people. They want board chairman Jane Spillman to step down. And they want no reprisals against the demonstrators. So far, they've all been motivated enough to keep the protest going. They marshaled their forces on campus at noon, then marched off for Capitol Hill, down 8th Street to Maryland Avenue. At the Capitol, they rallied once more and met with members of Congress. With me now is uh, Jerry Covell, who is one of the student leaders. And Jerry, I'm wondering, first of all, with the help of Tom Bull, by the way, who is doing our interpreting for us, if you can tell us what the students have planned tonight and for the rest of this weekend, or are you going to sort of stand pat and wait until the Board of Trustees meets? The students have planned to uh, celebrate tonight. We're going to have a party in celebration of Zinzer's resignation. They're very excited about that, but they're very determined yet to get those four demands met. We're very determined to go on with the protest, but we're gonna take things a little easy this weekend. Tomorrow, we're going to have an artistic day. We're going to have a competition, a variety of posters, banners, and so forth. We're going to be making these to uh, enhance uh, the pressure on Jane Bassett Spillman. We're gonna have a picnic, and the faculty and staff are gonna join us. We're gonna take things easy until Monday. That's what we decided to do at our council meeting. And you won't accept any action by the Board of Trustees as long as Jane Spillman has anything to do with the board, is that true? <clears throat> we won't accept any board action, whatever they say, until Spillman resigns. I've uh, noticed in the news that, uh, that the, she has said that the board wouldn't take any retribution on any, anyone, but... Uh, ...was the board's choice for president of the university, but students objected because she can hear. She resigned early this morning after a week of protests that shut Gallaudet down, but those protests continue. Thousands of students marched to the Capitol today saying they won't go back to their classes until their four demands are fully met. A deaf president, a majority of deaf members on the board of trustees, no punishment for protesting students, and the resignation of board chairman Jane Bassett Spillman. I.J. Hudson has been covering this story all week, and he joins us now with today's dramatic developments. I.J.? Well, Susan, as you know, Dr. Zinzer's resignation was not unexpected. There had been pressure from students, faculty, and alumni. And yesterday, there were statements that the decision was now up to Zinzer. That seemed to leave a door open for the educator, and today, she officially walked out of it. Dr. Elizabeth Zinzer and Gallaudet Board Chairperson Jane Bassett Spillman facing reporters to announce Zinzer's resignation. Zinzer said she was responding to the social movement of deaf people, not student demands. I think what we've seen here is a very special moment in time for the deaf community that has taken place, and we could not possibly, any of us, have quite anticipated that this was that moment in time until we found ourselves a part of it. Zinzer says she is returning to her job in North Carolina. Spillman has been at the center of the controversy. She said there would be no reprisals against students who had protested, but she skirted the student demand that she resign. The board will meet early next week, and the board will deal with the question of the selection of a new president, and will deal with any other pertinent issues that seem advisable. Spillman maintains she has been a strong advocate for the deaf and that the last week has hurt her. I personally have been extremely pained by the events of the last week. And it is for me and for the Board of Trustees to assess whether my stepping down or being removed for office, from office would alleviate the situation. The board meets early next week to consider how to select a deaf president. Candidates may include the two finalists and perhaps Robert Davila, a faculty member at Gallaudet for 15 years. I'm sure that this time around, they're going to give special attention to candidates who are hearing impaired. I was a candidate for the position twice, four years ago, and again, this region passed. But the selection of a deaf president is only another part of the students' demands. There are still the issues of Spillman and deaf representation on the board. 
The Gallaudet students and their supporters marched from the university in Northeast to Capitol Hill for the second time this week. In front, they carried an old civil rights banner from the days of Martin Luther King. The parallels and comparisons to the 60s demonstrations were not lost on the speakers. If this was your march on Selma, I want to congratulate you on your successful arrival. The students and their supporters who came from all across the country were tired but happy that Elizabeth Ann Zinser, the newly elected president, had agreed to their demands and resigned. It was incredible that she did, and I'm glad that she resigned. I was very happy that she resigned. I know she's a good person, but I think we still have to work very hard for three of our other demands. But the students insisted that only part of their goals had been achieved, and they say they still have a long way to go. Of course we're happy that she resigned, because that means we've accomplished something. But we still have proof to the world that we were right in the first place.